Trauma cuts deep, and the body keeps the score. Many people don't realize this, that some of the physical ailments in your body may actually be related to trauma in your soul. And once you can grab hold of this, once you gain this, this knowledge and understanding, it answers a lot of questions. You know, unresolved trauma in your life can attract demons. And so we need to be a people who break through trauma, who break down trauma, who break up trauma in our lives. We've got to get free. We've got to get delivered. We've got to get healed because trauma begets trauma. I wrote about that in my book, The Spiritual Warfare Battle Plan. Trauma begets trauma. Trauma attracts more trauma and trauma attracts all other kinds of demon powers. Trauma attracts unforgiveness. Trauma attracts bitterness. Trauma attracts fear. It's a real thing. And we need to see this as what it is. Now, the challenge is sometimes you don't remember that you were traumatized. Sometimes your subconscious is protecting you from the pain. And sometimes you know very well that you were traumatized, but you might not know how badly it affected you. Do you ever wonder or think to yourself, I'm not who I used to be and not like in a positive way, but I'm not who I used to be. I feel like I've lost a part of myself. I feel like I used to be so much happier, but I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't seem to shake it. Trauma has been let loose in the earth. I prophesied this back in 2020, and we've worked and labored to get people free so that the enemy does not continue to have the upper hand in your life. You've got to understand these dynamics. Now, I've done a whole mass deliverance series, or mass deliverance service, rather, on trauma. And you can find it over there at ahop.tv. But today, we're going to press in and pray about trauma. And I believe that some of you are going to get radically free. Others of you will become aware that there's something that you need to deal with. And you will finally have the courage, the strength, the affirmation that you need to break through. This is Jennifer LeClaire, and this is Mornings with the Holy Spirit. This is an abbreviated broadcast. I'm traveling through Europe, but I wanted to get on board today. So quickly help me to share this with your friends, share it on your timeline, share it via messenger. And remember to shout out, let me know where you're coming in from. We've got an abbreviated broadcast today. I'm not going to go on and on, but I'm going to pray until we break through. And I'll know, I'll know, I'll know when we break through. So come on in. Hello, Carol. Hello, Annette. Hello, Audra. God bless you. Hello, Cindy. God bless you. Come on in. Shout out what city, what nation. I see you in India. Portugal. God bless you. Awakening in the nations. Guys, check out awakeningprayerhubs.com. Join the movement. I'm looking for people in your nation. We're looking for Suriname. We're looking for Kataraboshe, the DR Congo. We are looking for Africa. We're looking through Asia. God wants to bring revival to your nation. Check it out, guys. As you come on in and share, you may you may uh, 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 qualify for a sponsorship. You can find that over there at awakeningprayerhubs.com. Please don't apply for a sponsorship if you are in the U.S. Guys, keep on sharing. Come on in. Hello, hello, hello. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hello, Deidre. Hello, 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 Taxi. God bless you. Come on in, Sally. Oh, Shadarabashi. Come on. Where are, you, where are you coming in from? What nation? What city? Keep talking to me. Drop those hashtags for me. Hashtag Jennifer LeClaire. Hashtag Mornings with the Holy Spirit and share this. Guys, we're going to go ahead and get started so I can get going forth. I'm on assignment. Pray for me as I go. Amen. Let's kick this off. Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, Senior Leader of the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement. This is Mornings with the Holy Spirit, pressing in daily to the power and presence of God. Let me just prophesy to you something good is going to happen to you 
today. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Activating Angels on Assignment. There's still time to get in on this. It's on early bird, and I want you to tap into it while you can because these angels are God's secret weapons. They're supernatural agents on assignment in the earth, but many of you are not working with your angels. It's like your angels are standing there with their arms folded, twiddling their thumbs, going, oh my goodness, what are they doing? Hebrews 12.22 tells us these supernatural messengers are innumerable, and they've been sent to minister to us. So get in line, understand the character and personality of angels, the mystery and angelic of angelic classes and ranks, the diverse functions of angelic beings, discerning angelic activity in your midst, angelic deception, deceptions to avoid, partnering with angels in prayer, and how to activate angels. I'm, I, I, we're going deep. I've never taught some of this stuff. It's going to be so good. Check it out. You can watch online on demand and armed with this information. You can work with angels accurately and see supernatural breakthrough results in every area of your life. Come on, school of the spirit TV slash angels. Guys, I'm coming to you live from South Florida. Our church awakening house of prayer is here and I'm there on Sundays preaching, praying, prophesying and casting out devils. Our heart is to equip you to live a supernatural breakthrough lifestyle. Come on in and get settled in our 1047 a.m. service. I'm preaching a new message each week, three new messages each week, 1047 a.m. You're going to find us there in Fort Lauderdale. If you're not in the region, guys, come on over to ahop.online and watch online. It's free to register. What's stopping you? Nothing. Maybe the enemy. Press past it. Ahop.online. You can even go deeper with us if you want to tap in to all the benefits and become an official web church member, online healing, prophecy, deliverance rooms, online prayer line, online virtual life. I mean, all virtual life. All my, I've got almost 400 messages in my archives in that morning service. There's so much there for you. If you want to go official with us, check it out, ahop.online slash web church. Then you can get involved in our 1.30 p.m. service. We're ge gearing into that series on activating angels on assignment, schoolofthespirit.tv slash angels. We've got great worship as well. Check that out. And then we're going to go over to the 4 p.m. service where we're in a series called uh, 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 Prophet and the seven mountain mandate. If you're a prophet, you need to know how to navigate these mountains, the demons on these mountains. If you're called to these mountains, schoolofthespirit.tv slash seven, the number seven mountains, schoolofthespirit.tv slash seven mountains. Amen. Come on, guys, let's get started with evenings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still small voice of God. And ooh, I like this. Today's devotion is titled the key to lasting transformation, the key to lasting transformation. And here's what I heard the Lord say, tips and tricks will only take you so far. Kingdom principles will carry you where I want you to go, says the Lord. Exercise my kingdom principles and you will see kingdom fruit. Put in place kingdom principles and you will step into a new dimension of truth that makes you more and more free. Come on, I'm liking this. And the Lord says, decide to abide by kingdom principles and you will see the change you want in any area of your life in which you choose to follow me. And the Lord says, tips and tricks are a quick fix. Kingdom principles and lessons are the key to lasting transformation. I just like that so much. Listen, you don't need a life hack. You need the Holy Spirit. Amen. You don't need a life hack. You need the word of God. You don't need a life hack. You need to obey what he has shown you and you will walk in his way. It's just as easy as that. All these get rich quick schemes in the kingdom. It's shameful. All these, you know, overnight success paradigms in the kingdom, preachers becoming salesmen and selling business courses, and they promise guarantee you'll win, you'll win. And I've talked to these people and they're losing their money. The only one that won was the shyster. Please be careful. The word of God will never fail you. Come on. Scripture references are in the devotional. Pick up your copy of Evenings with the Holy Spirit wherever you find books online. The prayer started now from the devotional. I agree with you, God. 
Kingdom principles, not self-help books, will transform me into the image of Christ. Your kingdom principles are easy to understand, but sometimes harder to practice consistently. Give me a determined heart to enter your transformation program. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh, Jesus. Father, we thank you today that you are so good. You are the God who transforms us from the inside out. You are the God who sees our end from our beginning. You are the God who orders our steps to the new thing, to the change. You are the change agent in the earth, and so we praise you. We thank you, God, because you are in this with us. You have not left us to process life on our own, but you have said that you will share your heart. You will share truth that sets us for you will show us things to come. You are in this with us and we are so grateful. We magnify your name, God, today. We magnify your presence over every other, every other, every other presence, every other distraction. I see that, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, help us to stay focused on your heart, no matter what we walk through, no matter what we come up against, no matter what comes up against us. Would you help us to stay focused on your heart? Help us to stay focused on your word. Help us to stay focused on your will for our lives. Lord, we do not want to be held back. We do not want to be pressed down. We do not want to be thwarted and hindered one more day. So we are going to take on a new strategy. We are going to start doing things differently because we will get nothing different if we don't do something different. We will go nowhere different if we can't see anything different. So help us, Lord, today. You are the lover of our souls. You are the God who shows us things to come. But Lord, we need you to show us what is now. We need you to show us what is opposing us. We need to We need you to show us what is in us that doesn't look like you. We need you to show us what is, what is, what is causing us to stumble. Is it really the enemy or is it our own mind? Is it our own emotions? Is it our own imaginations? What is going on, God? Because we want to accelerate. We want to forcefully advance. We want to take the land that you've given us. We want to march into the enemy's camp and take back what he stole in the last season. But we can't do that if we're not prepared, if we're not equipped, if we don't carry the truth that sets us free. I know there's a hidden truth somewhere, God. I know there's something about ourselves that we can't see, God. I know there's some issues in our heart of which we do not know, God. And I know that you are an on-time God and you are in control. But Lord, would you be so kind as to show us, give us a hint, lead us through breadcrumbs, help us to see what we need to see, because we want to forcefully advance your kingdom. We want to overcome old enemies, but sometimes we don't even know what those old enemies are. We can't see what's holding us up. We can't see what's holding us back. We can't see what we can't see, but the enemy clearly sees it. And I know you see it, God. The enemy clearly sees it. He sees it. He sees it. He's been watching us. He listens to our words. He watches our reactions. Sometimes we are oblivious. And that where, and then we're overwhelmed, then we're overcome with emotion, then we're just ready to quit and give up because we tried and we failed and we tried and we failed. And that whole thought comes to our soul. What's the use? It's not going to change. Nothing will be different. Nothing will be better. And I bind that in the name of Jesus. Our God is awesome. Our God is mighty. We will look to you. We will trust you in the timing. We are all in process. We are all learning and growing. We are all being being conformed into the image of Christ. And we shall not back up. We shall not back down. We shall not be moved off the promise. We shall not let our emotions run wild and lead us and guide us into more issues, more traumas, more dis- disappointment, more discouragement, more bad relationships, more bad decisions. Oh, Jesus, more bad thoughts. No, God, would you help us today? Give us a hint. Give us a clue. Give us one micro instruction. 
Help us, Lord, that we would know what to do, which way to turn, because we have all these decisions to make. And our past sometimes informs our decisions instead of you informing our decisions. We repent for the Ramashe. We repent for allowing the bad experiences of our past to inform our decision making in the now. Lord, forgive us for allowing the trauma of the past to influence our decisions in the now. Forgive us for allowing that last bad marriage to cause us not to want to engage anymore with uh, with in, rela- in intimate relationships. Help us, Lord. I just see so many of you out there today. My Lord, I can barely pray because I can feel feel. It's almost like something is right up at the edge of your throat. It's like right up to the throat. It's like wants to come out. Like a, I'm not talking about a praise. I'm talking about a demon. Some of you, this is the key for so many of you. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm pray teaching you a lot this week. Listen to what I'm saying. Some of you had traumas in your past. Some of you had betrayals in your past. Some of you had issues in your past, depressions in your past, anxiety in your past, fear in your past, and you thought it was in the past, but it's still there. I said, some of you thought you got over a thing and some of you didn't really get over a thing. You just shoved it down. I said, some of you thought you were free from that anger, but you're not really free from it. You have just turned it inward and now you're depressed. I said, some of you thought you got healed from that devastating blow that you took when you were 12, 15, 18. I don't know. Some of you, you thought it was over. You thought you'd been restored, but you've only been halfway restored. You're able to function, but your decision making is still influenced by the old pain. Your decision making, some of you, is still influenced by the old drama, by the old trauma. That's why you look at certain people and they remind you of others that hurt you and you don't want to be around the new person because they look like the old person. That's why some of you don't want to drive down certain streets. You go a different way on purpose because you don't want to be reminded of what happened on that street or who lived on that street. Some of you can't bear to listen to certain songs. Come on now. Because that song reminds you of somebody or some era in your life when you suffered greatly and you thought you were over it. But clearly, some of you are not over it. And your decisions today, some of your decisions, I'm talking to a few people, I'm talking to more than a few, but I'm not, I might not be talking to everybody, but I'm talking to a lot of you right now. You don't realize it. That's the deception. You don't realize why you're so quick to cut somebody off is because they did or said something very similar to what someone else in your past did or said. And you said inside yourself, I'm never going to let people talk to me that way again. And you made an inner vow and a demon power came to enforce that inner vow in your life. You're looking through the wrong colored glasses. You're not looking through eternal glasses. You're looking through trauma glasses, fear glasses, anger glasses, unforgiveness glasses. Are you listening to me? That is why you have knee jerk reactions because it's a protection mechanism. You're protecting yourself from the pain of the past. You haven't even gotten fully delivered from the pain of the past. So it's still there. So somebody poked that pain with their words. They poked that pain with their actions. They poked that pain. You thought it was gone because you're not weeping and crying and screaming in pain anymore. You thought it was gone because it was 10, 12 years ago and you don't think about it that much. But it's still there. For so many of you, it's still there. That's why you continue to make bad decisions. That's why you continue to get in bad relationships. That's why you continue to go to the wrong church. That's why you continue to choose the wrong job. Yeah, that's why you continue to ruin relationships with people that love you because you are afraid of being hurt again. Jesus. That is why. So, Father, in the name of Jesus. Would you help us today? Help us today because an enemy exposed is an enemy defeated. And you have blown this open by your generous spirit. You have exposed it. You have uncovered this in the name of Jesus for the glory of God. You have opened our eyes to some of the characteristics and behaviors that we walk in that we don't understand and that we regret after we act out. Some of you walk around condemned because of your behavior, 
but you don't realize that you're in bondage. It's not that you just have bad character. It's that you have a, a pain. You have a demon. You have some kind of issue that's unresolved in your soul. It's not that you're not a good person. You're not trying to hurt anybody, but hurting people hurt people. Oh, Shadabashi Romosho. Green Bashakata. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to break free. God, put your finger on that which you want to deliver us of. The kingdom of God has come. Jesus cast out demons by the finger of God. Lord, put your finger on that sore spot. Put your finger on that. That, that, that thing in us that's not healed and heal it or deliver us from the demon that's guarding that pain. Deliver us from these demons that are, that are guarding these guarding demons that, that guard our pain. So we can't see the pain, but where we act out of it without even knowing it because we think it's just us. It's just how we are. Oh, you're going to have to just deal with me. That's how I am. That's my personality. No, it's not your personality. God didn't call you to be harsh. That's not your personality. God didn't call you to be cold. That's not your personality. God didn't call you to bark at people and be rude. No, that's not your personality. That's a demon or it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pain. It's a trauma. Jesus. Let's deal with this. Let's deal with this trauma. Share this with somebody real quickly. I want to get into this trauma right now. I want to get into this trauma issue right now. I need you to share this. Quickly share it with your friends, share it on your timelines, share it via messenger while I pull up this scripture. Share it quickly while I pull this up. I want to give you a scripture and we're going to pray. Or I want to give you some information and we're going to pray. If you're tracking with me, say amen. Did the Holy Spirit just expose this? Yes or no? Can you see it? I can see it. It's very clear. I know you see it. Jesus. Trauma happens because of an injury. There's emotional trauma and there's physical trauma. Our bodies experience trauma when we go through surgery, for example. But trauma is also a, a, a psychic or a psychological rather or behavioral state that results from a severe mental or emotional stress. So your physical trauma can lead to emotional trauma and you didn't know it. See, I broke my leg twice when I was a kid. I ended up in a in, in traction for months. I was in a full body cast twice. Guess what? That didn't just cause trauma to my leg. That caused trauma to my soul. Being isolated, staring out the window while all the other kids were out playing Red Robin and whatever they were playing, freeze tag. And here I am. I'm, in, I'm, I'm stuck in a body cast for months. Had to learn how to walk all over again. All the kids looking at me and saying, oh, it, that caused trauma. Understand things happen sometimes in childhood that cause trauma, cause agony, anguish. And we need to understand that God was with us in that moment and he wants to deliver us from the trauma. And sometimes it's a matter. Listen to me closely. It's a matter of sometimes you have to get rid of the of spirits of trauma before you can really heal from the trauma because you don't necessarily feel traumatized anymore. The way you did when it happened, but those spirits of trauma are still in you and they've attracted many times a lot of other demons. Trauma is a gateway spirit. You know how they say marijuana is a gateway drug? Trauma is a gateway spirit. It invites all sorts of other spirits in. Because when you're traumatized, you can feel hopeless. Here comes a spirit of hopelessness. Here comes a spirit of depression. Here comes a spirit of anxiety. Here comes a spirit of unforgiveness. Here comes a spirit of, of distrust. Trauma opens you up to so many things. And I would implore you to get some inner healing. But sometimes you can't get inner healing from trauma until the demons of trauma have been cast out. And then once you cast out the demons, you still have to do inner healing. Listen, if you have a spirit of trauma, you will still need to go through some kind of inner healing. Because that place where the demon was needs to be fortified and healed. It's kind of like putting a... Uh, a patch on a, on a, on a ball, you know, that, that it's just, it's patched. But if you kick the ball hard enough, the patch is going to come off. It's going to wear off. And if you take that patch off, all the air comes out. You don't want these trauma spirits patching some of these memories and then making you, um, into a different person than you are morphing your personality. You'll need inner healing. 
You need to seek that with the Lord. I love this scripture in Lamentations. Now, Lamentations, you know, Lamentations means woe. It's like not a good scene here. Here's Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. And he writes the book of Jeremiah. He writes the book of Lamentations. And it's just like, oh, Lord, this whole book. (laughs) But he says this in Lamentations 3, verses 31, 32, and 33. For no one is cast off by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love. For he does not willingly bring affliction or grief to anyone. Now, you know, here's the thing. God didn't bring your trauma, but many people blame God for the trauma. Where were you when my child died? Where were you when my husband left? Where were you? Where were you? And God is like, I'm right here where you left me. It's not God's fault. He wants to bring you comfort. He wants to bring you peace. He, he, he can handle your anxiety, cast it upon him. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the error that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midnight. He is with you to comfort you. But we need to ask him to free us from trauma spirits. And listen, trauma is often the strong man. Trauma will bring in fear, all sorts of things. So you might need to schedule a deliverance session. I want to get this process started. God can do anything. He can completely deliver you right now from anything without anybody's help, just you and him. I've got that book out there, Deliver Yourself from Evil, with all the self-deliverance stuff in it. But sometimes you need help. And with trauma, many times you need help. Depends on the severity of the trauma. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Psalm 56, 8 says, you keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, you are a good, good Father. You are a good God. And we love you, Lord. We acknowledge your power. We acknowledge your kindness, your love. We acknowledge your willingness to set us free. We acknowledge you, God. We acknowledge you this morning. We say yes. And, Father, we we ask you to forgive us for any wrong attitudes we've adopted because of this trauma, blaming people for what happened to us, blaming you for what happened to us, blaming ourselves for what happened to us and condemning ourselves. You've not called us to condemnation. You've not called us to fear. You've not called us to trauma. So Father, we ask you to forgive us for the wrong attitudes we've adopted, for not running to get help earlier, for not being desperate enough like the woman with the issue of blood where she was just determined to get healed. Father, forgive us for for lingering in this state because it's affecting our relationships. It's affecting our calling. It's affecting our witness. So forgive us, Lord. We're not going to blame. Well, somebody should help me. My pastor, no, we're not going to blame. It is our responsibility to seek out the healing that we need. And Father, forgive us for being deceived. Forgive us for not heeding the voices of those in our lives who told us there was something wrong, but we couldn't see it. So we thought they were just picking on us or they just need to shut up and deal with it. It's not me, it's them. Forgive us for anything that we have done to prevent our freedom. We're not condemned, we're convicted that we don't have to stay this way. We don't have to stay traumatized. We don't have to stay fearful. We don't have to live this way. You don't want us to live this way. The enemy comes, but for to steal, kill, and destroy, and you came to give us life in abundance to the full till it overflows. That is the life that we want, not a traumatized life. So, Father, forgive us, and we forgive anybody who was part and parcel of our trauma, whoever left us, whoever betrayed us, whoever did whatever they did to us, where we choose right now because we want to be free, we choose to forgive them. We choose to forgive those ones who hurt us, who caused this trauma in our lives, who left us, whoever, whatever, we forgive them. We forgive them by force of our will. And Lord, we ask you to forgive them in the name of Jesus. We ask you to forgive them in the name of Jesus. And Father, we renounce. We renounce every spirit of trauma. We renounce, we renounce the victim mentality. We renounce the the entitlement, the chip on our shoulder. We renounce it in the name of Jesus. 
We renounce every spirit of trauma, childhood trauma. We renounce you sexual trauma. We renounce you violent trauma. We renounce you <laughs> marriage trauma. We renounce you. We renounce all forms and all spirits of trauma now in the name of Jesus. We renounce you. We, we want no part of you. We will no longer allow you to influence our decision making. We will no longer allow you to speak to our hearts and thinking it's God or thinking it's us. No, no more. We put our foot down now in the name of Jesus and we say no to you. No to trauma. Now, Father, the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over every trauma spirit and I say, come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. I, I'm praying for everyone under the sound of my voice and I speak to those trauma spirits in you and I say, come out in the name of Jesus. Release release the people of God. Let them go in Jesus' name. You are not welcome. You have no right. You are expelled in the name of Jesus. I speak to spirits that came in through trauma and I command you to go, to go, to leave now in the name of Jesus. I say trauma spirits, get out of God's people this morning, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus against you. In the name of Jesus, I say you are not welcome. You are evicted. And Father, in the name of Jesus, show your people the, 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 the tentacles of trauma. Show your people what other areas trauma has affected so that they can seek inner healing, so they can seek your heart, so they can seek your will in their lives and see it come to pass once and for all. We break the powers of every, uh, uh, I, I see that, Lord, every uh, pouncing demon that's just waiting to, 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 to come back in. We say no. We ask you, Lord, to fill us with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Fill us with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Fill us with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you to fill us to overflowing with the Holy Spirit and help us, Lord. Not to take for granted what has just happened and not to neglect to get in your word and renew our mind, your love and your freedom. Help us, Lord, not to just walk away from this broadcast today and say, well, that was done when there may be still other issues that we need to deal with. We thank you for what you started and you will complete the good work that you've started in us today. You will do it because you love us and you are an awesome God. You are a mighty God. You are a God who reaches down and delivers us from anything and everything from which we will not stand. We don't want trauma, fear, pain. We don't want our decisions to be informed by past hurts and wounds. God, so help us to walk in the freedom that Christ died to give us in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Come on, somebody say amen. Jesus. All right, guys, you got to get free of this trauma. You've got to get free of this trauma. Again, you can find a a class over there on trauma at ahop.online. I know it's ahop.tv. Sorry, you can find it over there. There's lots of stuff over there for you as well. We want to see you get free. We, you know, Jesus died to heal you everywhere. It hurts. You know, our bodies could be traumatized. Our souls could be traumatized. Our relationships could be traumatized. We've got to break through this. Guys, I don't want to spend too long today, but I do want to remind you of the series school uh, on School of the Spirit TV, activating angels on assignment. Please get on that while it's still on early bird. Get on over there, sign up for it. You're going to love it. It's going to really, really help you as well. I want my, I'm really, I mean, really believing for Awakening Prayer Hubs to double in this next season by the by by the next couple of months. Why? Because God wants to see. You know, the more I travel to the nation. You know, like I am right now, I see the need and I see a people that needs to be equipped. I see a people that needs a prayer family. I see a people that needs to come together. And, and there's so many uh, intercessors out there alone, fighting alone. You don't have to fight alone. You can fight with me. Amen. Not with me, not against me, but with me. We fight together. We war together. We see a, 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 a soul saved. This is our vision. Soul saved. Churches revived and nations awakened, and we're seeing breakthrough all over the world. We've added Bolivia, Latvia. We're adding prayer hubs all over the world. You might be next. If you're in a third world economy, you can apply for a sponsorship. Check that out at Awakening Prayer Hubs. 
Com. Listen, if you want to sow today, we want to give you an opportunity to do that. Uh, uh, before we get off today, I'm going to pray you out. But just real quickly, I'm going to spend 30 seconds on this, guys. Remember, please, too, to share this before you get off the broadcast. JenniferLeClaire.org slash donate. You can become a partner there. You can sow a one-time seed there. Also, the uh, prophetic books, Cash App. Cash App is dollar sign prophetic books, dollar sign prophetic books. Then text the word also give. You could use text to give. Text give to 754-701-2161 and follow the prompts. 754-701-2161, follow the prompts. Then there's PayPal, paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. You can use the PayPal as well as the Venmo. Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire. Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire, the Zell, Zell is info at jenniferleclair.org, info at jenniferleclair.org. And then the P.O. Box, if you want to mail a check, a gift, a present, whatever you want to mail, a nice letter, amen. P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. You can use the Facebook stars or the YouTube stickers. Guys, let's pray us out. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you bless us indeed. Enlarge our territory. Let your hand of power rest upon us and keep us from evil. Keep us from pain. Help us to be a blessing to everyone around us. Lord, let blessings chase us down and overtake us. Prosper us with everything we put our hand to. Keep us safe. I plead the blood of Jesus over all of us from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Ask, uh, uh, Help us, Lord, to ask you for the right things out of not selfishness, but out of sacrifice. We want to be more like you. So keep us. Bring home prodigals. Save souls of our family members, God. Uh, heal bodies, deliver people from the ties that bind in Jesus' name. Guys, I got to run. I love you. Share this before you get off. Tomorrow, I'll be back here with you praying again live. It's going to be good.